Piping bags are so useful to save time when you're cake decorating, even without piping tips. Here are eight ways to use them. Open up a piping bag that hasn't been cut and pour sprinkles into it. Cut a small piece off the tip of the bag. Put a tray under your cake, and if the frosting has already set, brush around the bottom of the cake with a damp paintbrush to make it slightly sticky. Now use your piping bag of sprinkles, letting them spill out onto the cake board all the way around the cake. Tapping the bag on the cake board will loosen any sprinkles that clog the bag. Now use an offset spatula or a spoon or your hand to scoop up the sprinkles and press them into the cake. The tray will catch any sprinkles that roll off the cake board, so they don't get all over your table or counter or floor, and at the end you can angle the cake board and tap it so that any extra sprinkles fall onto the tray. With the help of a piping bag, you've made a pretty sprinkled border. Use piping bags to make chocolate details to decorate your cakes. Melt chocolate in the microwave for 30 seconds at 50% power, and if you want to colour it, use oil-based colours so that the chocolate doesn't seize. Spoon the melted chocolate into a piping bag or a sandwich bag like a Ziploc bag and cut a tiny piece off the tip. Squeeze the bag to pipe the chocolate onto a piece of parchment paper or wax paper or baking paper or a silicon mat and put it in the fridge or freezer for a few minutes to set before lifting the chocolate up and pressing it into the frosting on a cake while the frosting is still soft and sticky. Pipe elaborate patterns and designs using just piping bags with no piping tips, with a tiny piece cut off the end of each bag. The more you cut off, the bigger your dots will be. Do a test squeeze before piping onto your cake, and if you have to use a lot of pressure to get the buttercream out, cut the hole a bit bigger and then your dots will be neater. Hold your piping bag at the same angle as you pipe so that you're always pulling away from the cake, and that way the little peaks on the dots will all point in the same direction. Use piping bags for a foolproof drip on cakes. Heat about a quarter of a cup of heavy whipping cream in the microwave for 20 seconds. Then add three quarters of a cup of white chocolate chips, pushing them underneath the cream. Leave it for five minutes and then stir until it's smooth. If you want to colour it, oil-based colours are best for this, but if you only have gel colours that you use for buttercream, use just a few drops so that the chocolate doesn't seize. When the drip cools to room temperature, pour it into a piping bag and cut a tiny piece off the tip. Pull it slowly around the outer edge of the top of the cake, pausing and moving it just over the edge of the cake to allow a drip to spill over. For the fastest drip you can apply without any special tools, just a simple piping bag. It's no surprise that piping bags are time-saving for piping. Use them for filling, piping around the outer edge of each cake layer and spiralling inwards, and also for frosting, piping onto the top of the cake and then in zigzags around the cake. So that next, when you spread the frosting, it won't pull off crumbs or chunks of cake. You can also pipe cake batter, which is really useful for quickly filling cupcake wrappers or pans for donuts or mini bundt cakes so that you don't get batter all over the pan. And you can also pipe cake batter to make unique, colourful cake layers. Make sure you tap the cake pans so that the cakes bake as level as possible. The outer edge will darken as it bakes, but the inside is stunning, so cutting into a cake like this is so much fun. Make scallops by piping dots of frosting onto a cake and then swiping them upwards or sideways to flatten and spread them. The trick here is to wipe your offset spatula clean after every swipe so that you don't drag the previous colour of buttercream onto the next scallop. You can use a spoon for this technique instead if you prefer. By covering the cake with these scallops, you can create colourful texture quickly and without any special tools. To create striped frosting without a striped cake comb, use a piping bag for each colour and cut the ends off together so that the holes at the ends of the bags are exactly the same size. And this way your stripes will all be the same width, or height I guess. Squeeze to pipe a ring around the cake. You'll flatten the rings later to make stripes. Continue up the cake, trying to pipe each ring so that it's right against the one below so that there aren't any gaps where you can see the crumb coat of frosting underneath. This will give you the straightest stripes with the most precise division between the colours, rather than blending together at the join. 
Scrape around the sides of the cake several times with a straight-edged cake comb, and you'll take off the excess frosting, and although the stripes won't be perfect, they'll be neat and pretty, and it's much quicker and simpler to do striped frosting this way than to use a striped cake comb. If you do have a striped cake comb, using piping bags is useful too, to fill in the grooves between the stripes created by the cake comb. Using piping bags is quick, which is key when you're making a striped cake, because you have to chill the cake after using the striped cake comb, so now you need to work fast so that this buttercream doesn't chill and set before you've scraped off the excess and smoothed it. Use this technique with piping bags to make detailed characters that look like they're made with fondant. Pipe or draw your character and trace it onto parchment paper or wax paper using buttercream in a piping bag with a tiny piece of the tip cut off. Start with the small details and freeze for five minutes after each color. Leave the color with the biggest surface until the end and spread that buttercream flat to cover up the frozen details so that they're sticky. Lift the paper up and press it against a chilled cake so that it sticks. Put the cake into the freezer for 15 minutes or the fridge for an hour and then peel the paper off to leave the design behind. You can pipe or spread more buttercream over any air pockets to fill them in and then scrape off the excess to leave a neat detailed character on your cake, like this or this. To write a message on a cake, all you need is a piping bag with a tiny piece cut off the tip. The easiest way to write neatly, I think, is to use loops and swirls in your letters, and by adding a dot at the end of each line by holding still for a moment as you squeeze, before lifting the piping bag away, that dot makes the line look more tidy than just pulling away suddenly. Center your messages by starting with the middle letter and working your way out in both directions, or write your message out on paper first so that you can see how much space it will take up. I hope this tutorial has been useful. Visit my cake school on BritishGirlBakes.com and start your seven day free trial of my All You Can Cake membership, which gives you access to everything on my cake school. Thanks for watching.